that basically is what it kind of feels like. Uh, it feels more like because the the thing that uh the extra level of thingamajiggy here is that you have hero levels and item levels that give your total level. And uh, the higher your item level, the better items you get out of your level chests. Because each time you level up a character, you get uh, better... L like, each time you level up your character, you get a commendation chest. A commendation chest... Damn it. A commendation chest then lets you open it up and you get uh, better items. Typically better than even the ones you get in... From completing levels. But the meta is don't open up your commendation chests when you get them. Open them only when your item level reaches level uh, 200. Or else it's kind of like a waste. And it kind of feeds into that annoyingness. That annoyingness. Like that feels like it's the best way to do it because else it's a big grind. So it's kind of like a grind to a different grind. And the levels of difficulty hamper getting to that level of being able to go like, okay, now I can feel like I can play the game normally now, kind of thing. Because like I feel I have to play this one level again and again and again to get the uh, higher level items for like more item level so I can get more uh, like get higher item level items from the secondary difficulty to then be able to go and get better commendation items so I feel like I can play the game normally now by just playing and having fun and uh, uh, leveling up my characters that way. Honestly, it's better than I'm making it sound, but really... They could have done better, in my opinion. And the funny thing is... I hate this. This is annoying. This game is getting to me, where it's just kind of like, why? Why have an enemy be there? Why can't my spin actually kill them? That one was on me. But yeah, it just feels like... Too much, like, ooh, we're gonna try and compel them to play the game. But honestly, the wor the worst part about the game is that the AI is not that good. Sometimes they'll just stand and watch you as you bleed out. But that's only happened like twice. The other time is uh, when, uh, what is it? They don't. They aren't smart, so they're not gonna play into the AI. Isn't smart enough to play into your. Oh hey, I want to get better loot, so. They won't pick up tomes if they have a healing item, so you have to wait for them to get hurt for them to pick up the healing item. Or to use the healing item and then pick up a... Uh, tome. And I'm not even sure if they can pick up grimoires, because grimoires are in places where AI typically won't go to. And just like, I wish there was a button to be like, okay, hey, AI this dude, pick up the diddly-doo for me, please. And like, I get it. They're trying to be like, ooh, more interesting. And the leveling system is cool because you get perks that do more extra stuff. And that's really cool. And the extra perks that you get from higher level gear can be really cool. And there's even a crafting system where if you get duplicates or lower level stuff, you can like smelt them down into bare essentials to make more items of the type of item that you like. Agagar! Okay, that's annoying. Could have telegraphed that a bit better game, but I know I'm Russian, but you kind of... No game. No. It's like after that one level where you're just like, and now you died because you didn't know there was a third lantern. No, you can't do the and now you have to wait. How dare you. You can't pull the waiting game after you did the rushy rushy game. But overall, Vermintide 2 is fine, but it's just like the combination of the AI not playing well into the grind that they kind of made for themselves is annoying. The AI doesn't play into it really well. The game itself doesn't play into it very well. 
Where the hell do I go? Uh oh. Okay. The mangoes lead the way. An item that helps me immensely. But yeah, just like whenever a game kind of gets to the point where you're playing just to level up your character and be like, oh, I can play this game better. <laughs> Meh. Be gone, Satan. It's like whenever you get to that kind of uh, level with a game, it's just like, it doesn't feel fun anymore. Vermintide 2 just reached a point of grind that makes me not want to play it anymore. Which is sad, because Vermintide 2 is genuinely a fun-ish game. Not super duper amazing, not terrible. Good. Wish it was better. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. It has. It's one of those little things where it's just like, if only they changed a few things, I would like this so much more. We finally did it. The pain is over, my boys. They have death traps after the... How dare you? <laughs> they have death traps after the stinking crystal box that hurts my soul. This game hurts my soul. Kind of. <laughs> Yeesh. But the sad thing is, like, with most games, most games with these little problems uh, are mainly the type of ones where it's annoying to figure out what to do. Take the uh, the level we just played a little while back, where he's just like, here's this weird, like, seesaw platform that you need to jump on and get it in just the right, right way to make it across. Like, that's trial and error, and then once you know what to do, it's fine. Like, same thing with, like, Metal Gear Solid. I like Metal Gear Solid. I played through that and uh, recorded it. It's on my channel. It's, like, it's really fun. I, it's really fun. It is a pain to play as a first-time run because of the little things. I forget exactly what the little things are. It's been a while. Oh, crap. Like, it's been a while since I thought about them. But uh, there were problems I had as a first-time run for Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1. I just feel like if they changed a little bit here or there, it would be better. Uh, but overall, I like Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid is one of those games that you can play after uh, going through all the little problems. Damn it! <laughs> it hurts in my brain. I know what I need to do, but then my brain says no. Just, there are platforms there. They are safe. No, they're broken. I mean, I could try the rope trick. Get on the rope, run that way, but I'm gonna play this legit. I will be a legit man. I'm a legit gamer. But, I forget. Oh, yeah, uh, my biggest problem with Metal Gear Solid uh, 1 on the PlayStation 1 is definitely the, uh, the final boss. It sucks. <laughs> the final boss. Oh, I forget. The final boss is honestly very badly designed. Yeah, the rope trick uh, seems to be pretty hard to pull off. Billy Ball! I want to hold. Game says do not hold. It hurts my brain. What it is telling me goes against my sensibilities. How dare you? How dare you? Billy Bones! But yeah, the final boss in Metal Gear Solid 1 is bull. Not terrible, but honestly could be better. And mainly because some of it makes no sense to my brain. A creak! How dare you. It came out of the fog. Uh, newsflash. How dare you. Uh, newsflash, game of developers of the remake. Uh, I'm pretty sure the fog from the last one was mainly because I landed on top of it. You hurt my soul. Seriously, when it comes to games, unless it's a specific, like, oh, this enemy damages you when you land on top of it. That type of enemy, please let me jump off of it. And apparently it homes at you. I, how did I get past this before? Oh. 
All right, I think I did. Further than before. Oh crap. That juked me. The game itself. There we go. Come on, give me an extra life. There we go. So we have this extra chance, baby. Extra chance of life and death and meaning. And there's another chick. Woots, Wooda. I want to hold it. But the game says no. Do not hold. Dang it. <laughs> faster. Faster. I know it's game over. Let me go. And yes, I know that I suck. But at the same time, again, it's hard to tell. It's just like, is it me? Some of the times, like, clear tells me, it's like, I need to stop holding up. Some of the other times, it's just like, why can't I just jump off of the enemy? It doesn't have a thing where it's like... That's one of the weird things, like, some enemies, you can jump off them no matter what. Even if they're not really, like, once you be like, oh, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure you can jump off of the skunks from the first level. You can definitely jump off of the crabs. So you'd think they'd be like, uh, oh, I think I know. Dang it. Damn you. Damn you to heck. But a lot of the time... When it comes to games with... Oh, yeah, I never did finish that little piece of uh, conversation. Like, um, after I got past my hatred of that one part of um, Metal Gear Solid and actually knew what to do, I'm able to really enjoy it and do it far faster than my first playthrough. The problem is that... Oh, you can kill them? Or is that just an invincibility thing? Weird. Guess it's a cucumber. Cucumber. Cucumber Simba. Begun! Okay, that's an invincibility thing. Give him a... Like, I wish that there was, like, a unique death animation for enemies that died to... Billy Bones! I hate... Seriously, it homes for you. That's so mean. Yeah, but it also comes with a certain thing where those really hinder experiences. Also, why does it go over over gaps? It's so annoying. But it's just like, those I think are inexcusable to a certain extent just because like, unless it's like a puzzle where you're meant to figure it out. And also depending on the exact thing, like the overall design. If it's if it's a certain way the first time around, and just like inexplicable, weird, and be like, why kind of levels, then that's very annoying and a guy where I label it a guide dang it game and give it a low rating as a first time playthrough. A good game de a good game design is where you're able to take first time playthroughs and damn it where you're able to take first time playthroughs and make them as painless as possible when it comes to uh, like uh, noob syndrome noob syndrome should never ever be just like oh it's just because uh, you didn't know what to do therefore it's your fault not the games but it it's up to the game to tell me how to do that the first time around and if the game fails at that then the game failed at that okay holy crap I don't know how I did that please get me to that checkpoint Yay! Yeah, that's kind of the thing where uh, point-and-click games... But the difference of that one, I think, is because point-and-click games are, like, of a different nature and audience and spirit. There's a certain level of, like, yeah, don't do this with point-and-click games still. Ugh! But at the same time, that's kind of where the humor comes in with them. Damn it. 
But when it comes to games like Metal Gear Solid and be like, oh, the boss has a laser specifically there to stop you from going beneath him, but the way to beat him is to go beneath him and make it seem uh, like like you're doing something super cheesy, making a final boss into kind of a joke when it feels like it should be a bit more difficult. Damn it. It's like it's all about presentation and being able to convey things to the player. And the best games can do that masterfully, kind of like Mario. The first Mario Bros. game is a master at teaching the player what to do, when to do it, just through gameplay alone. And in an age of today, it, I find it kind of inexcusable to just be like, or even... Motherfucker. Yeah, people are brain dead, but then there are certain ways of, like, uh... Like, there are just certain ways of being able to do things and, like, design games overall to make the, like, uh, try and limit player dumbness. Will you be able to get rid of it permanently? No. But it's just, like, when it comes to me, a seasoned, like, player of games, like, I can usually be like, okay, damn it. Well, I can usually be like, okay, this is me, that's me, this doesn't feel like me, it feels like the game is influencing me, and just feel like things are weird. And generally, if I... I can generally accept, like, okay game design and decent game design, and be able to say, like, okay, this is my fault, this is your fault, this is everybody's fault. But I just don't like it when games are kind of cryptic, and where it feels like you're more inclined to go towards a guide than actually find it out yourself. Like, again, the final boss of Metal Gear Solid, it feels like you cheese the boss when you figure out how to beat him. Whereas if you don't know how to beat him, it feels like he's an unstoppable force because the game doesn't... Damn it. The game doesn't really tell you. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's just like... I've never played that many of these types of games before. These types of platformers weird. Mainly it also is the perspective. They weird me out. I can't get a grips with it. I'm just gonna die and get all my lives back. <laughs> 